I don't tend to get involved with many celebrities, but when they come to me or people come to me for advice, when they're suddenly, I mean, it's even like Chris Hoy when he won his first, you know, Olympics and gold medals, and he came to me um, and said, "Look, you know, everything comes through me," but it, it's mainly with young stars that suddenly become big stars is it's common sense. It's try and stay close to the people that have been close to you for the last five years because they're around you purely because of, you know, they like you or they care, not because you've got a lot of money and you're famous. You're going to have a load of people all over you now telling you you're wonderful, marvellous. You know, I've worked with stars who are surrounded by people, big American stars, whatever, and if they want to think today's Thursday, then everyone tells them it's Thursday. They lose all of reality, which is why so many of them become totally obnoxious, because you know they become legends in their own mind, and real people just you know you don't really want to mix in case you pick up something and things like that, and that's what so many of them become. But then people around them encourage that, um, and it goes back to what you were saying about celebrity. It is empty and meaningless, um, and often these people finish up five, ten minutes later, empty shells. For the rest of their lives, they're going to be, you know, very, very sad people, and often their lives don't go on very long. So the, the general advice I give, not because I'm representing them, but because people ask all the time, is, is that stay close to those that have been, you know, care about you, that have shown that over the years. In, in a totally different world, you know, my friends have got nothing to do with the industry. They're people that don't care if I'm on television or sweeping the streets. They say what they honestly think and feel, not what they think I want to hear. And that keeps you sane. And that makes you appreciate all the good things. And the more you work with stars, particularly, the more you realise how empty and meaningless it is. Because fame is a drug, just like cocaine, just like alcohol, gambling and it can be just as destructive. You know, and we're about to do the biggest ever Royal Variety show, and the top of the bill is a guy called Neil Diamond, who I worked with many years ago. The only time he's happy, I genuinely believe, is when he's on stage. The rest of life doesn't really enjoy, can't really cope with. When he's on, he can be himself and just do what he loves and, you know. And the more you know, the more you see, you know, there's an awful lot of them out there that are going to be the richest man in the cemetery, but they also become obsessed with their fame. And they're jealous of anybody else coming up. So the fact that they've just done a huge show and sold out whatever is ruined because someone has just done something down the road and they're a bit younger than they are and they can think, oh God, they're going to... It's, it's really that kind of a business. You know, of course there's huge advantages and there's huge pluses. Um, but for every one, like Paul Newman, that controlled it and enjoyed it, and there's a hundred that don't, and it totally controls them.